four months ago. It is very important because when we are speaking about mutation in coronavirus, uh, it is uh, very important to know about these time because this time is uh, important for this process of mutation. Next slide, please. Uh, there is a battle. There is a battle between human and coronavirus, not only in our human, but also in all the world. Uh, so in this uh, situation, uh, it is very important to know about the uh, uh, capacity of this battle. I mean, the genome of us, which is human, and the genome of the virus. Because when we are speaking about the battle, means battle be between who? Between human and the virus. And the virus is just only the genome of only the genome of the of the RNA. So uh, when we are speaking about the virus, means genome. When we are speaking about the human, also is the genome. Uh, when we say about the battle, battle is between uh, something which is in human. When virus enter into the cell, go into the cell, uh, what happened? The virus start to reprodu re reproduction of the virus and increase the amount of the virus in the cell and broke the cell. It is the cell death. So another problem for human which is very very important because actually the cause of death in human mainly is not the virus it is the result of the virus virus such as uh, immune response the human immune response and also and also cytokine storm i mean when we are speaking about the uh, result of results of this battle means uh, actually you can see is the death but this death usually is caused of immune response of our human to the virus it is not due to uh, production of the virus and breaking the cell and so on it is very important to be in you, your mind because uh, it is cause of many one, and it is very important for treatment and so on, and, and also ma management of the patient. Next slide, please. Uh, so I, I would like to start from genomic or genetic of the host, which is human. When you are speaking about genetic of the host, means population genetic uh, genetic of re receptors which is ace and also genetic of the host in point of immune response in point of immune response actually is the age age is very important very very important and during our life we have we have a lot of mutation occurs occurs in our life and it is very important for the response to the uh, this battle with the virus. Next slide. Here I, I am showing you. I am showing you uh, the markers in population genetic. Uh, maybe it is a little bit specific, but doesn't matter. Uh, with this slide, you can see uh, overally uh, the difference between different population in the world, because. Uh, if you look at the death and look at the uh, result of this battle between virus and human in different population, different society, different countries, you can see, for example, in Iran, if you look at this slide and different color, different colors here shows different markers, different markers, as you can see here, uh, in these markers, are, it is different in different society, different countries, and different ethnic group. So it means, according to the, our genetic, definitely our response to the uh, response to the virus is different. It is very important. Next slide, please. In this slide, you can see, for example, I, I am focusing on this region 
Iran, Iraq, and Turkey, and so on. This is using another marker, which is Y chromosome marker, Y DNA haplogroup J2 marker, as you can see here. This uh, actually is spreading of this marker in population in this area is in green color. And you can see it. what this means, means our uh, ethnic group is very similar in this marker. And so according to this similarity, maybe accor according to this similarity, maybe the response or, uh, to the uh, virus is a little bit similar. Next slide. Uh, this is another marker because we have a lot different markers in genetics. So with different markers, we can uh, ex find out exactly the difference between different ethnic groups. Here also I am uh, showing, for example, Iranian people with uh, Syrian people. Or if you can look at, you know, for example, uh, Armenians, which is uh, Caucasian, uh, the each color is difference between different SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphism, which is, this is the main thing, the, as, when we are speaking about SNPs, means personalized medicine. Personalized medicine is the future of treatment in whole the world, definitely, definitely. So in this situation, when we say SNPs, autosomal SNP, analysis of autosomal SNPs, as showing in this slide, it means in future we have to think about personalized medicine, which is for each people is different, each country is different, each uh, society is different, each ethnic is different. So I wanted to emphasize on this uh, matter, which our genetic is very important to response for responding to the uh, COVID virus, and uh, so we have to bear in mind. Next slide. Uh, I said to you, age. During the age, we have a lot of mutation occurs in our body. So in this situation, you can see uh, the results of, I mean, fat fatality or this happen in uh, old people. They, you can see in all societies old people are in risk. However, uh, young people, is, they are not, they are not. I am not saying from myself, it is from the uh, epidemiology of the spreading the uh, uh, COVID-19 in different societies. As you can see, the next slide, please. Uh, In this slide, you can see, for example, in the USA, if you look at the USA or Italy or Iran, uh, I am just speaking about the deaths because when I, if I speak about the uh, people who suffer from infections of COVID virus, uh, it is not reliable. Test or other thing. But when we are speaking about the deaths, definitely the uh, counting of the deaths or the amount of the people who uh, died, it is close to right uh, amount, close to right number. So I hope. So if you look at this uh, uh, number of deaths here, uh, definitely shows most of them are over the age of 15 or 16. 16. Definitely more than 16. Uh, Looking uh, in the US, for example, mainly, mainly more than uh, 60 or uh, 55, something like that. In Italy, which is more genetically, we are close to Italy, is the same. In Iran, which very close to Iraq and Iran, as I showed you, mainly are in age of 16 or 50, over the 50. So what I am saying, I am saying age is very important. Why age is very important? Because of many things, one of that is mutations, which we got during our life, 
Next slide. Uh, as you can see here also, uh, inflammation or cytokine st storm is the main cause of this usually. And in this procedure, we have a lot of proteins and signals and many things which are involved in cytokine storm. Uh, in many, 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 many papers, uh, actually, uh, they say cytokine storm and inflammation is the main cause of this. Uh, usually, especially in uh, our uh, lung and other uh, organs in our body. But uh, what? that's why I want to say and emphasize uh, when you are speaking about treatment of coronavirus, it is not only the target the virus. Sometimes we have to target inflammation. That's why you can see the, in, during the treatment, many protocols, uh, in many protocols for treatment, they use uh, some corticosteroid to decrease the inflammation, decrease the cytokine, storm the re the reason is uh, this inflammation uh, next slide please uh, two things are very important especially for you for people who are involving in this uh, actually webinar because i want to say because we made some drugs and something which is uh, focused on oxidative oxidative stress and decrease the inflammation what they work on they in our uh, cell uh, inflammation and our uh, cell cycle we have parp and parge uh, as you can see in this uh, slide down there right down there uh, it is very important these two signals are very important in the procedure of uh, response to COVID-19. Uh, it is mentioned in many, many papers. So if we target these cycles, we can increase, we can definitely increase the inflammation. So when we increase the inflammation, it means we can increase the death. So that's why I'm saying about the inflammation and many genetic things are involved in this one but it is useful for you as a pharmacologist and so on because now you can see what you have to target next slide okay i want to go to another side uh, another thing is the viral cell entry how the cell how the virus enter to the cell. Uh, as you know, the receptor for the virus is ACE2. ACE2 is in different area or different organs, especially uh, in our lung, uh, in our kidney, in our uh, also uh, in heart, in our heart. That's why I want to say, uh, usually the problem which this virus, this virus can make is in these organs, in these organs, especially when the fatality is high, the problem is in heart or in kidney. We, we can, you can see many, many kidney failure or renal failure during the process of the battle between virus and human. Uh, and also in our lung. So that's the entry of, uh, this is like showing the entry of the virus into the cell. Next slide, please. Uh, as you can see COVID here, COVID, according to our genetic, these receptor and uh, the uh, virus can interact using these uh, proteins. So if we have mutation in this protein or in the virus, the in entering to the cell will be affected, will be affected. Next slide, please. 
and also this is the origin of the virus the origin of the virus also between the bat and human is caused by this changing in this receptor this receptor i want i don't want to enter in this area now because we don't have time but just i mention this one for future maybe next uh, webinar next slide please here uh, previous slides i i told about uh, mutations and genetic and genome in human during this battle between virus and human now i want to I want to focus on virus mutations, which is very important for treatment, diagnosis, and, and vaccines. What's the virus? And you can see the virus here, uh, just uh, re in real picture and schematically. Next slide. Uh, this is the protein of and, and the structure of the virus. The virus is only one RNA, nothing else. Only just RNA, as you can see in the in the packaging of the proteins and lipids, that's the package. This RNA packaged in these uh, uh, proteins and RNA, as you can see, that's envelope membrane and nucleocapsid and so on, and some spikes, which is very important for interaction between AC2 or receptor and the virus as I explained before many many proteins as you can see here uh, are in this virus uh, from the RNA uh, next slide uh, here you can the proteins and see it uh, above the green line you can see some uh, small lines these small lines shows uh, actually small lines shows the SNPs, SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphism or uh, changing in uh, nucleotides according to mutas mutations in virus. So you can see many, many, many changes in virus here happen during these four months, during, the the, during these four months from the starting of outbreak of this virus. Next slide, please. Uh, I am referring to the to a, a paper as showing. You can see in the red line. I am. Uh, I have the, written here. Uh, when one virus from one person moved to another person during the transmission from human to human, the virus usually ninety. 9.8 percent of the nucleotides is the same but two actually 0 0.2 0 0.2 nucleotides it means many when you are speaking about nucleotides then about 30 kb 30000 nucleotide is in the virus when we are speaking about 0 0.2 it means about 60 60 about 16 six zero nucleotide will change from one person to another person what this means a huge a huge meaning is behind this change means the virus from me to another person is maybe it is absolutely different it's not the same as the virus which came to me so 30 16 nucleotide is different when we are say, saying 16 nucleotide is different mean, means 60 nucleotide or amino acid is different in the protein it means the protein from virus is a little bit different next slide please which proteins are different you can see in this slide many proteins is listed on uh, in the slide such as for example scds where you can see scds there scds what is the scds scds is exactly the uh, uh, the protein which can stick to a receptor ace 
you can see when the this protein, when this protein, S protein change, mutation happen in S protein and change in, the, in this S protein, what this means? It means infectivity of the virus will change. Infectivity of the virus will change means maybe the, the next virus from me to another person has got more infectivity or less infectivity. Uh, I will explain to you, it is very important to know, usually uh, infectivity goes up because we spread the virus, but is it, is it possible to, for example, it's a question, is it possible to mortality increase or decrease? I will tell you. Next slide, please. Okay, here again, you can see many, many mutations, many, many, the dots, the dots are mutation happen on protein, which is the line under the slide. The bottom of the slide you can see is the proteins. They are proteins from uh, virus. There is some mutation, mutations which happen, can happen in the protein. Next slide, please. Uh, in this slide, I aligned uh, whole sequences in, in the world which is up here. I, I didn't show all of that, but just some of them in, you can see. But uh, during our research in the university, we align whole sequences and you can see some of the sequences are the same. For example, the line which you can see in red lines or uh, gray lines, it means some of the mutations, some of the changing are the same in different countries. According to these changes, we can uh, make the tree, I mean the tree of the phylogenic tree. Next slide. Phylogenic tree shows uh, in different sequences. I align in this uh, slide, I align about four, uh, 47 sequences of COVID virus already are in the databases in the world and download uh, these sequences uh, in our university and made this uh, figure. And you, when you can see this figure means uh, many, many of these virus already changes and they are not the same. Some of them absolutely change. Look at one of the line, which is very, very long, uh, a little bit uh, at the bottom of the slide. You can see the line. It, it means this virus is much different from another viruses. So what this means, it means the virus is changing every day in the world, in the world. And it is very important for us to make this strategy for the future and the battle. Next slide. Even you, I, I made this one is a little bit different. For example, Bulukal, because we are very close Arabic people and so on. We matched the Saudi Arabia, which I found some sequences from Saudi Arabia. Uh, the blue one, the dark blue, you can see the, it is very, it is very, for example, from the top of the slide, which is from USA. Some of the sequences are from USA. The tree you can see there, this slide. Anyway, next slide. Uh, and also, I showed you uh, this uh, genetic of coronavirus in different species, in different species. The origin of that, because some people are saying it is from bat. And you can see with this tree, human, which is the arrow shows the human one, uh, the human arrow, show, yes, yes, that one shows the uh, human origin of the COVID-19. Uh, and you can compare with that, with these uh, tree, phylogeny tree, because it shows the uh, similarity between nucleotides, nucleotides between different viruses. Next slide. Uh, what happened? What happened? Excuse uh, me, Professor Mudarasi. Just excuse two, me three slides finished. Uh, we don't have, yes, yes. yes, excuse, we don't have enough time. Yeah, uh, uh, Okay, I thank said, you. I said two, three slides finished. Thank you. Uh, mortality and infectivity is very important because we, when you change, when you change, we change the sequences, mortality will change, means this. 
Sometimes you get at, attenuated virus, which is very important for making vaccine. If you find a, one attenuated virus, please give it to me because I, it's very important for me. <laughs> I can find, I can make the uh, vaccine. Next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, very important to know about the vaccine treatment testing. Next slide. I, I said to, in two slides about the vaccine. Next slide. Uh, I said if the mutation is in the spike, a spike, uh, or maybe in some other way. For example, in influenza, we have many, many mutations more than COVID-19. But in measles, we have less mutation, uh, less mutation. That's why you have vaccine for measles for all your life. One made uh, 1916, oh, 15 years ago, and there is no day changing. But what happened for COVID-19? We imagine, we imagine COVID-19 is somewhere between the flu and missile. In point of amount of mutation happen occurs in the virus. What happened? Next slide. What happened? Happened is this one. When recently, recently, just recently, they told, I mean, uh, scientists told, D614 G means substitution of D and G in the protein, exactly that side. Uh, this caused, just imagine, this caused four to five times greater sticking, interaction of S, S protein to ACE2, ACE2. And it is very important to enter into the cell. It means very important to infectivity. A more infective, four and five times more infective. Next slide. It's very important for making vaccine. And also it is very important for making tests for diagnosis. If this mutation happened in somewhere uh, in sequence, which is our primer for PCR, is located on this area, it means next time, our PCR doesn't work. It means our PCR doesn't work. That's why, especially I am saying about Iran and Iraq. Bear in mind this, my word, this word, because we have to know about our sequences. Otherwise, we made a mistake in uh, diagnosis and PCR test. That's why I am saying we should know about the sequ our sequences uh, otherwise, when we use PCR test, the primer sits somewhere which doesn't work. Uh, here is uh, about treatment, drug. Actually, it's not, it's antivirus. Next slide, please. Yes. So, uh, for uh, we have yes, only the last stone. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, there's the no enough slide. time. We have only one minute. Yes, yes. One more. One minute. That, more. That's the last slide. <laughs> thank you. Actually, implementation of the mutation in COVID-19, uh, because I found out your webinar is focused on pharmacology. So I put this slide for you, actually, because as you can see, Remdesivir and also Favipiravir, two famous uh, antiviral focused on the protein from virus means depend the protein called uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase. If imagine if the mutation happened in this polymerase in this protein from in the virus, which is possibly happen, which is possibly happen, so remdesivir doesn't work or favipiravir doesn't work it means be in your be in your mind and keep in your mind that sometimes due to many mutations antiviral drugs doesn't work too 
So it is very important to have the mutations and changing of the virus for whatever you want to do with the virus treatment, diagnosis, or vaccine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Mudarisi, for uh, sharing uh, updated information about the genetic mutations of the coronavirus. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, now uh, uh, we have uh, to start the main topics uh, uh, of our uh, webinar today, which is about the nanotechnology and biotechnology and the development of the pharmaceutical products. Uh, so the uh, the next speaker today, our speaker today is the Professor Dr. Adnan Al Bedran. You are welcome, Professor Dr. Adnan. Uh, you can uh, start sharing your presentation, please. Uh, okay, Dr. يعني لازم شوية تطوني سماحية للشيرينج. نعم, Dr. دقيقة. موجود كوهوست حضرتك هسه تأكد دكتور أي أي تمام دكتور ما عندك مشكلة بس لي أنا مشير بروفيسور سنوقفنا شير هسه دكتور تفضل بروفيسور مدرس يريلي it is valuable information you share with us but excuse me we don't have enough time uh, we maybe uh, okay, we will no. maybe Professor Mudarisi will open the uh, question and answer se session uh, in the uh, when we finish. We can uh, give you more time for uh, give us more information. Thank you. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, Lan. Tafal, Doctor. Tamam. Tafal. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, first of all, it's my pleasure to welcome Professor Mudarisi and Dr. Ahmed Al-Katib from Iran. Uh, it was very nice uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Mudarisi. You're also, I would, okay. I would like to uh, thank Dr. Qutayba and Dr. Ahmed and Dr. Falah for inviting me for this uh, webinar. And my uh, topic is uh, biotechnology applications in uh, pharmaceutical products. And I will uh, save the time, inshallah, Dr. Kutaybid. Shukran, Dr. Doctor. Best, Dr. Dr. Amkan, full screen, have a text, so we have? Full screen, okay. Yeah, Dr. Amkan, have a text. Shukran. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the fact that I'm not sure about the Arabic. This is the most important thing. Biotechnology applications in uh, drug products. I mean, the field is big. يعني مهم جدا ضروري يعني كلية الصيدلة وجامعة البصرة تهتم به بشكل كبير. What are the pharmas biopharmaceuticals? It's biologically significant compounds like hormones and protein useful for treatment of variety of human health disorders and it's obtained from biological source and produced through industrial biotechnology. And we can compare between the biological and conventional drugs. Conventional drugs, as you know, is synthetic organic compounds, while the biologicals are proteins or carbohydrates, past uh, products, and extracted from the living organisms. And the uh, products is always uh, the recombinant human proteins, like insulin, like interferon, uh, and etc. Uh, human proteins can be cloned, gene recovered from human genome as a genomic DNA or cDNA placed in the expression vector using ligation uh, techniques and uh, resection endonucleases, then transform uh, bacteria used uh, like Shirisha coli or bacillus species, and then grow in patch culture in large industrial scale, then purify uh, protein uh, products. Uh, يعني الحقيقة عملية الكومبوننت uh, DNA هو إنه إحنا نختار الموقع المناسب uh, لجين معين نستخلص uh, ال DNA أو ال RNA ونحوله إلى cDNA بواسطة الريفيرس ترانسكريبتيز إنزيم بعد ذلك هذا المنتج اللي هو ال DNA أو cDNA النقلة إلى فيكتور يعني بواسطة الإنزيمات الليجيشن والريستركشن إندونيكليزز ثم النقلة إلى الفيكتور النقله الى بكتيريا او يعني كائن حي اخر وننميه ب يعني 
طريقة صناعية كبيرة ثم البكتيريا تبدأ بإنتاج البرودكت اللي إحنا نريده راح بعد ذلك نستخلص هذا البرودكت من البكتيريا ونقيه ونستخدمه كعلاج. Some recombinant proteins approved for human use and these recombinant proteins gained around 60 billion dollar in 2006 يعني في عام 2006 هذه المنتجات ربحت 60 مليار دولار يعني عبارة عن ميزانية دول فلذلك هذا الفيلد مهم جدا للدول مثل دولنا يعني حتى لا نعتمد فقط على مثلا مثل بلدان تعتمد فقط على النفط إذن الصناعة الدوائية لها دور كبير في يعني الميزان التجاري الوطني من الأمثلة على البروتين يعني البروتينز المنتج دراجز في الأسواق فاكتر 8 فور فور إكزامبل اللي يستخدم فور هيموفيليا أي تريتمنت فاكتر 11 فور هيموفيليا بي بيشنس and tissue plasminogen activator اللي يستخدم for acute myocardial infractions and insulin which used for diabetes mellitus and human growth hormones which used for growth hormone deficiency in children and erythropoietin which is very important hormone for treated anemia and DNA is one for cystic fibrosis and various interferons which used for hepatitis B and C and multiple sclerosis. Uh, if we talk about the insulin, uh, which is made by pancreatic beta cells and enable cells to take up glucose from the bloodstream to use in production of uh, ATB. And before recombinant insulin was available in the market, insulin was obtained from the cows or pigs pancreases. And the uh, uh, cow and pigs proteins, insulin proteins, is different. There is differences between uh, these proteins and the human proteins. The differences, for example, in cow uh, by three amino acid differences and the big one amino uh, acid differences. These differences uh, can stimulate allergic response. Well, therefore, human insulin is preferred, which have uh, 51 amino acid. And this uh, human insulin as uh, produced by uh, Eli Lili company and the name of their products is Humilin. What's the strategy for insulin production? And I'm going to show insulin in this work with biotechnology. We have to have the pancreas from animals, as we said, from cow or pig, and we extract the messenger RNA from this tissue, and then converted the messenger RNA to cDNA by reverse transcriptase, هذا إنزيم ال يعني ال العكسي نسمي إحنا النسخ العكسي. Then the cDNA will transfer to the plasmid, and the plasmid will transfer to the bacteria, and that now the gene of insulin is now already in the bacteria, and the bacteria will produce the insulin. After that, we will uh, extract the bacteria and extract the uh, protein from bacteria and purify and use as a, uh, a drug. This is simply uh, talking about the strategy of uh, insulin. <coughs> uh, human growth hormone uh, is promote overall body growth by increasing amino acid uptake by cells, protein synthesis and fat utilization for uh, energy. And dwarfism caused by insufficient production of human growth hormone by the pituitary gland. That's why human growth hormone can treat dwarfism to help children to reach their normal height and uh, size. The old method of the uh, growth hormone uh, was purification of human growth hormone from uh, cadaver pituitary glands. Uh, في الفترة السابقة قبل البايوتكنولوجي كان نحتاج إلى ثمان جثث كل سنة حتى نعالج المريض وهذا العلاج يستمر من ثمانية إلى عشرة سنوات فشوفوا شقد يعني كمية الجثث نحتاج لنا تقريبا ثمانين جثة حيوان حتى نستخلص من عندها الجروث هرمون وهذا طبعا مكلفة ويعني ما يستطيع كل الناس أنه يحصلون على هذا الدواء وعلى النيو ميثود جين برودكشن for uh, hormone growth synthesis, as we said, 
uh, in insulin if, uh, now we have uh, protropin from uh, genetic uh, company and humatropy from EDD uh, company is already in the uh, market uh, here also we can see how to use the uh, growth hormone to uh, treat the uh, for example cows or animals for more production of meat or uh, milk the third uh, protein is erythropoietin erythropoietin is a human erythropoietin produced in kidney الحقيقه هذا الارثروبوتين هو من الهرمونات المهمه التي تنتج او يعني يصير بها ريليز من الكدني وفي بعض الاحيان من الكبد uh, due to the hypoxia in the body يعني من قل كميه الاكسجين في في الخلايا راح الكدني تتحفز لريليز هذا الاريثروبوتين والاريثروبوتين از جلايكوبروتين اكت اون ذا بون مارو تو انكريز ذا برودكشن اوف ذا ريد اند وايد بلاد سيلز اذا هو مهم حتى ينشط لنا النخاع العظم حتى ينتج لنا خلايا الدم الحمر حتى يعوض نقص الاكسجين اللي حادث في الجسم ذس بروتين Uh, it's about 165 amino acids in a human and widely used in AIDS for development of immunity. The production of recombinant erythropoietin, it seems isolating and constructing human uh, erythropoietin cDNA and then subjected the cDNA to PCR using specific primers and the PCR product will be cloned into a vector for the purpose of propagation and subsequently engineered into appropriate expression vector and then this uh, uh, vectors will go to the bacteria and culture production and purification and uh, nowadays is uh, there is some products is uh, ready to use in the uh, market like epo uh, epotene alpha for treatment of anemia due to chronic renal failure El epogene which uh, this products in 1989 recombinant hormone used for the severe anemia that's a complication of many kidney disease and neopigene uh, neopogene uh, stimulates the stem cells to produce neutrophils and other leukocytes uh, the fourth uh, products is uh, treated the hemophilia uh, patients and hemophilia A is abnormal, blood clotting is absence of factor 8. Be فقدان هذا الفاكتر عند الاشخاص اللي فاقدين هذا الفاكتر راح يتعرضون الى نزيف بالدم وهذا الهيموفيليا مثل ما معروف هو مرض وراثي ينتقل عن طريق الامهات الى الابناء، النساء حاملات للمرض لكن الذكور هم اللي يصابون بهذا المرض. Before recombinant DNA factor 8 was obtained from blood. Also, we have to have around 8,000 pennets needed per patient per year. يعني نحتاجنا إلى من تلاقينا الدم حتى ننتج هذا الفاكتور 8 لعلاج شخص واحد خلال السنة. ولذلك يعني كانت العملية مكلفة جدا. Also, the risk of transmitted of some uh, viruses like HIV before wide spread of screening for HIV. حقيقة يعني مخاطر انه اعطاء هذا الفاكتور مباشره الى المرضى ادى الى كثير من المخاطر من ضمنها في في الثمانينات يعني وخاصه في العراق اول حالات سجلت لمرض الايدز في العراق هي لدى اطفال مصابين بالهيموفيليا وعولجوا بالفاكتور 8 اللي استورد من شركه فرنسيه وللاسف كان ملوث بالاش اي في ولذلك هؤلاء الاطفال اصيبوا بسبب هذا العلاج بمرض الايدز وهذه كانت اول حالات لتسجيل مرض الايدز في العراق. الفاكتور 8 ايضا يعني ممكن ينتج لنا كثير من الامينو اسيد. الان ايضا الفاكتور 8 موجود في الصيدليات وطبعا ما ممكن استخدام البكتيريا له لانتاجه، ليش؟ لانه يعني يحتاج لنا خلايا يعني حيوانيه لانه فيما بعد هذا المنتج راح يروح الى الاندوز بلازم كريتيكولام اند كولجي ابارتاس لاكمال انتاجه فلذلك تستخدم خلايا حيوانيه بدلا من خلايا الكائنات الحيه الدقيقه ايضا بروفيسور عدنان اكسكيوز مي وي دونت هاف انف تايم يعني دكتور اذا امكن شوي تختصر لنا بدون زحمه عليك اوكي الله يحفظك دكتور عندنا ايضا الانترفيرونز عندنا ايضا المونوكلونال انتيباديز واشياء اخرى 
وكثير من المونوكلونال انتي باديز الان موجوده في الاسواق ايضا الدي ان اي فاكسينيشن الان احنا في حرب مثل كما يعني الدكتور مدرس السيد وي هاف وي هاف باتلز ناو دايز تو ميك فاكسين فور كورونا فايروس اتسترا ماي ذا لاست كويشن تو سيف ذا تايم وير از ذا يونيفرستي اوف بصرا اند ريكومبوننت دراجز هاز يونيفرستي اوف بصرا use this techniques for produce the drugs the uh, answer is yes we have many uh, experiments many research about uh, these things for example dr afrodit in college of uh, science uh, uh, work on the insulin uh, dr rasha munder in uh, college of uh, veterinary medicine uh, work on the growth hormone from cow And Dr. Sebe from Pharmacy College work on the herodine, and Dr. Rafif Amer work on the parathyroid hormones. Even it's same from the Pharmacy College. Uh, also, Dr. Awatif Hamid Isa from College of Science work on the monoclonal antibody from uh, camels, and also Dr. Abdullah uh, entered this field uh, for uh, produce the uh, I think in interferon. Uh, so the uh, University of Basra is the Uh, only the uh, university in Iraq work with the uh, produce the uh, drugs by biotechnology uh, uh, biotechnology research. Thank you very much, uh, and I'm sorry for uh, taking more time. Thank you very much, Professor Adnan. Thank you for uh, sharing us uh, this valuable information about the biotechnology applications and pharmaceutical products. Uh, really, it is very important subjects and uh, need uh, more focusing about uh, this subject uh, by researchers, by uh, by the specialists. Thank you again. Now we, we will go to the uh, second uh, topic, to second uh, speaker today. Uh, but uh, just I want to, I'd like to uh, uh, to welcome uh, Dean of College of Pharmacy Assistant Professor Dr. Falah. He is joining with us. Dr. Falah, uh, tismana ida mojud wiyana. Ma atakad mojud, Dr. Ma dakhil yana. La, Dr. Mojud, bas baada hasa dakika. Dr. Falah, hasa hadartak al panelist sirit. Mumkin hadartak ida andak. If you want, uh, if you would like to welcome the uh, speakers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Shukran jazeelan lil hadur wal asatidha al muhadharin fi hadhi al nadwa al qayyima wa ashkur bidhat Dr. Mutrisi li hadurihi fi hadhi al nadwa min al jumhuriya al islamiya al iraniya wa ashkur Dr. Adnan ahad aba al barik al bahthi ودكتور هشام ودكتور احمد نجم شكرا جزيلا لكم وعلى هاي المعلومات وعلى الندوه القيمه اللي قمتوها شكرا لكم ونتواصل ان شاء الله دكتور قتيبه واصل الحديث شكرا لك شكرا, شكرا جزيلا دكتور, دكتور فلاح ثانك يو فيري ماتش اسيستنت بروفيسور دكتور فلاح ذا دين اوف كوليدج اوف فارماسي ان بصره And uh, I, I'd like uh, also to welcome uh, Professor uh, Dr. Serkis Krikor. Thank you, Dr. Serkis, for joining us. We are very grateful and we are so happy because you are with us. Uh, we hope you are, we are, uh, you are well. Uh, and uh, thank you again uh, for you to be with us. Now we will uh, go to, this, uh, to the second speaker today. Uh, which is uh, Dr. Hisham uh, Muhammad. Dr. Hisham, uh, on the topic uh, that he will cover, uh, applied nanobiotechnology in pharmaceutical products. Fadal, Dr. Hello, everyone. And many thanks for all the organizers, uh, coordinators, and the speakers. Uh, they gave me the opportunity to join this webinar. Uh, due to the Time shortage, I will go through uh, to my talk, uh, which entitled uh, Applied Nanobiotechnology in Pharmaceutical Approach. So the content divided into three main parts. 
I will focus as a preview review and introduction uh, on the concept of nanotechnology and bio nanotechnology. Then I will shift on to the methodology. Finally, I will close with stick you a bit with application of uh, nanobiotechnology materials in a pharmaceutical uh, approach. As a, uh, as a flashback, everyone knows there are uh, four types of things in around, which are divided into micrometers. That's mean uh, this material is under the human eye range. The second one is micrometers. Uh, it is under the microscope range. The third one is nanometer, which means under the electron microscope range. And finally, the atomic range, it will be sub-nano, including the pico, pimto, ato uh, meters. The fact from the father of nanotechnology. On 9, uh, 29 in September uh, 1959, the father of nanotechnology, he said in the Congress of the Inventors, he asked Actually, he asked this question, why we can't write and enter the British Encyclopedia, which includes the 24 volume on the pen head. This equation actually paved the way to the evolutions in, nano, in nanotechnology. Some of the audience, actually, he, he answered him, surely you are joking, Mr. Feniman. Dr. Uh, Richard Feynman, the father of nanotechnology, he got a Nobel Prize in 1965 during his work on the quantum. So now, what is the nano means? The prefix nano comes from the Greek word nanos, which means one billion part of something. Mukhtasar nano, jai min kilma agriyakiya, المقصود من عدها أو تعني إنه جزء من البليون من شيء معين. So nanotechnology can be described as engineering and manufacturing at the scale of nanometer. So the nanometer equal to 10 over minus 9 in meter. Examples of nano substance are atom, the diameter 0.1 nanometer. The second Example is DNA, the diameter of double strand is two nanometers. And the third example is the cell has the size 1000 nanometers. So what's the nanotechnology mean? Nanotechnology divided into main branches, nano device and nanomaterial. And then the nanomaterial divided into parts nanostructures and nanocrystalline. The nanostructures also divided, depends on the chemical nature of, the, of this structure, divided into polymer-based nanostructure involved dendermeres, nanoparticles, micelles, drug conjugates, protein nanoparticles, and nanogel. The second one is the lipid-based nanostructures involve liposome, exosome, and solid lipid nanoparticles. The third one, and the last one, is non-polymeric nanostructure, which involve carbon nanotube, nanodiamond, metallic nanoparticles, quantum dot, and finally the silica nanoparticles. So now the classification of nanomaterial. There are three types or there are three classification of nanomaterials. One of them, the first one, classification of nanomaterial based on size. That's what I mentioned in the previous slide. There's, there's different size of the nanoparticles or nanomaterial. For example, the atom take 0.1 nanometer, while the C60 is one nanometer. Also the carbon nanotube get one nanometer, whatever. The second classification of nanomaterial based on the nature or the chemical nature, which 
divided the nanomaterials to two main parts. First one is organic nanoparticles, which will include tender mares, polymeric micelles, polymeric nanoparticles, and liposome. While the second part is inorganic nanoparticles, which include silicon nanoparticles, gold nanoparticles, quantum dot, and magnetic nanoparticles. The third classification of nanomaterial is based on the dimension. It's divided the nanomaterials to four parts. The first one, zero dimension nanospheres and the crystals, which include quantum dots, fluorine, gold nanoparticles. The second one is first dimension nanotube wires and rods, including the carbon rods, nanorods, carbon nanotube and gold nanowires. The third type is second dimension, thin film, plates, layer structure, which include carbon coated nano plates, graphene sheets, and layer nanomaterials. And the last type of the uh, nanomaterial dimension is the 3D dimension. Bulk nanomaterial polycrystal, which include liposomes, polycrystalline, and dendromeres. How to fabricate the nanomaterials or the nanomaterials fabrication? There are two strategies, main strategies, to make the nanomaterial. The first one, named top down, which means the fragmentation of the bulk or the compound to make the nanostructures while the second one is the opposite to the first one. Button up means rearrangement of atoms to make the crystals, after that to make the nanostructures. Aku tariqtiyan li tasni'a al-mawad al-nanawiyya. Tariqa min al-asfil ila al-a'la aw tariqa min al-a'la ila al-asfil. Mukhtasar hai tariqtiyan innu huwa الطريقة الأولى هو تحطيم المواد والمركبات للحصول على الأنستركتشر بينما الطريقة الثانية هي تجميع الذرات والجزيئات لعمل التركيب الجزيء النانوية التراكيب النانوية الجزيئية الطريقتين ممكن عملها بطريقة ميكانيكية أو بطريقة كيميائية أو بطريقة حرارية So, to make this process or anyone from this process we need several devices some of the uh, some of them, I will list it there. First one, homogenizer. The second one, ultrasonicator. The third one, melts. The fourth, spray milling. The fifth is the evaporation or evaporator. And electrospray, ultracentrifugation, and finally, the nanofiltration. So, if I got one of these nanomaterials, what happened after that? We need to do several type of tests like UV, XRD, FTIR, TEM, ES, uh, SEM to, to say, yes, we have this nanomaterial. And if we need to use this nanomaterial we got in pharmaceutical approach, we need to do several activities. For example, antibacterial activity, antimicrobial activity, anti-diabetic activity, and finally the antioxidant activity. To say, yes, we have nanomaterial, now we can use it in the pharmaceutical application. The pharmaceutical application of nanomaterial. There are several techniques using nanomaterial in pharmaceutical application. For example, gene delivery, or nano staining for cell imaging, or tumor activity stopping nanoparticles and nano vaccine and nano uh, biotic and finally the drug delivery. What's the drug delivery mean? Why I focus on drug delivery? Drug delivery means how to reach the active ingredient of any drugs inside the cell, inside the cell without any side effect. So, which types of materials, nanomaterials, we can use in drug delivery system? There are several types of nanomaterials uh, used in, in, in drug delivery system. For example, graphene layer, carbon nanotube, quantum dots, tender mirrors, 
ribosomes, fullerene, fat, the best one of all of them is the gold nanoparticles. Why the gold nanoparticles is the best one or the best choice? Because there are several advantages for gold nanoparticles. First, it's the cheapest. Second, it's easy to deal and easy to use. Third, it's available. And the main one is the fourth. We can use mix of process at the same time. For example, we can use the, the gold nanoparticles for drug delivery and the targeting for drug at the same time. Another thing, we can use the gold nanoparticles in gene therapy and gene gun using the nucleic acid delivery. Now, what's the drug delivery targeting? and why we can use the nanomaterials in drug delivery target. The drug delivery target or drug targeting means how to keep the concentrations of the active ingredient of any drugs inside the cell without reach to another site. So the main important things to do the drug targeting, we need to choose the nanocarrier. There are several types of the nanocarrier used in drug targeting. For example, lipid-based nanocarrier, polymer-based nanocarrier, inorganic nanocarrier, or the drug conjugated. So, in the brief, the drug targeting means if I use the drugs in systematic circulation to reach to the organ, and then from the organ we need to reach the drugs to the cell. And finally, from the cell, we need to reach the drugs and keep the concentration inside the organ units. That's the pre uh, description for the uh, drug target, target itself. The global marketing of the, nano, uh, of the nanomaterials application in market. There are several types of the field using uh, nanomaterials, for example, agriculture, healthcare, industrial, environment, electronics, biomedical and pharmaceutical approach and product. So, as anyone can see, there is a dramatic increase of the biomedical and pharmaceutical product since the last two years, and they suspected to more getting highest of the uh, marketing in global applications within the next six, six, uh, six years because there is a huge, as Dr. Adnan mentioned, there's a huge benefits and there's a huge of money spent for this kind of the technology using nanomaterials as the drug delivery and drug targeting. The end. Big thanks for, for your attention due to the shortest time. So I get well fastly to finish my presentation. Thank you for all. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Husham. Thank you for uh, sharing us uh, the information about uh, this topic. Uh, uh, really, it is uh, very important and valuable informations. Uh, we, uh, now we, we have to go to our last uh, speaker today, our last uh, topic today, uh, which is uh, uh, the role of the nanotechnology approaches in the optimization of the biopharmaceutical drug considerations. Uh, our speaker is Assistant Professor Dr. Ahmed Najim from College of Pharmacy, University of Basra. Dr. Ahmed, you can start. Yes, you are sharing now. Thank you very uh, thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kotebe. Uh, thank you for all uh, the participants in this webinar, for speakers, for attendees. Uh, thank you for uh, second time. Uh, Dr. Kotebe, my lecture, uh, my participant, my attendees, my lecture about the role of nanotechnology approach in opt the optimization of biopharmaceutical drug consideration. Outlines, uh, we have general introduction, biopharmaceutical drug consideration, uh, and uh, finally, particle size reduction versus biopharmaceutical consideration. 
general introduction. Nanotechnology improves the performance of drugs in different types of drug form. How? By enhancement of the solubility of drugs, by enhancement the rate of dissolution and then oral bioavailability, enhancement the absorption and permeation, decrease the enzymatic degradation, especially for peptide and proteins, and increase the direct targeting and localization at the site of action. Biopharmaceutical considerations, as we know, uh, especially for uh, pharmacy students and uh, specialists in the pharmacy, we have uh, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamics uh, behaviors or considerations. So we have solubility, dissolution, absorption, distribution, elimination, bioavailability, and drug action. Uh, for bio, for pharmacokinetics, uh, it means for what the drugs uh, act for the body, human body. While for the pharmacodynamics, uh, what uh, the body uh, uh, make for the drug. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, pharmacokinetic properties, we have uh, dissolution and release, absorption, distribution, elimination. This pharmacokinetic considerations. What the drug, I mean, what the behavior of a drugs uh, within the uh, human body or for within the biological bodies. Well, when there is efficacy for the drug at the site of the action, this means pharmacodynamic consideration. Or uh, by this uh, figure, we can uh, explain the administration and absorption for drug by use of various uh, dosage form, uh, oral, tablet, or liquid dosage form, intravenous injection, uh, subcutaneous injection, transdermal inhalation, all these lead uh, to be uh, drugs to be absorbed or distributed uh, or metabolized within the uh, body or by certain organs. And then we have uh, different uh, pharmacokinetic, as we uh, say before. What is the effect of particle size reduction on the biopharmaceutical considerations? Drug nanoparticles, the yield of nanotechnology uh, without uh, addition of uh, ligand or other a biological target are called drug nanoparticles uh, due to the size of the yield uh, as uh, Dr. Hisham uh, mentioned that in uh, lecture. Nanoparticles have features that overcome the solubility problems by increasing the saturation solubility, enhancement in dissolution velocity and increased adhesiveness to the surface or cell membrane. The solubility of drugs is very important. Uh, from this figure, we see that the solubility distribution of the top 200 oral drugs, uh, about 39.7% of the drugs represent practically insoluble drugs. So the solubility is, it is a problem for many types of drugs. So it must be solved by a different approach. One of the important approach to solve this problem is the use of nanotechnology. Also, we have relationship between the solubility and permeation of a drug. So we have by pharmaceutical classification system in, we, in which we have four classes for drugs, depending on this. Uh, also, we have high solubility with high permeation, low solubility with high permeation, high solubility with low permeation, and low solubility with low permeation. So depending on the nanotechnology, we can increase the solubility for drugs, especially for a class two and a class four drugs. The relationship between the particle size and the saturation solubility can be expressed by this equation in which we have a relationship between the saturation solubility and drug uh, particle size. So as the saturation solubility or as the particle size is decreased by the nanosization, we can increase enhancement in the saturation solubility. So what is the effect of particle size? Actually, the effect of particle size uh, uh, at first effect the particle uh, and uh, the solubility rate. We have two terms, solubility rate and solubility extent. In general, the particle size reduction uh, increase the rate of solubility of drugs. So an improvement of the solution rate can be clarified by a noise Whitney equation in which we have a relationship between the particle size uh, diameter and the dissolution rate. So as the particle size diameter is decreased, uh, the rate of dissolution is enhanced. From this picture, we see comparison between microparticle and nanoparticle. Uh, we, uh, we have 
a different approach for particle size reduction. Microsization or micro encapsulation, we have nanosization. But the effect of nanosization on the uniformity, on, on the morphology or the size of the particle, especially crystalline powders, is more. Uh, by affecting the distance between uh, the particle and the uh, solvent, with, which must be ventilated within the particles to be dissolved. So by nanosization, we get uh, more particle size, uh, solubility, and dissolution rate. Amorphous fraction produced in nanosization. One of the yields of uh, nanosization is nanoparticle. So nanoparticles may be amorphous, uh, partially or completely, or crystalline. So if there is change of the drag particles from crystalline to amorphous by the nanosization, we can get enhancement in the solubility rate and extent. The high energy of some methods, uh, I, uh, then we have different types of nano, nanotechnology approach, uh, um, then by the top down or methanol up down, as the Dr. Hisham mentioned that. The high energy of some methods of nanotechnology result in partially amorphous nanosuspension or nanoparticles, uh, this uh, mostly, or sometimes result in completely amorphous particles. So the amorphous particles are unstable with high energy and may be converted to the low energy crystalline state over time. This conversion occurs depending on different parameter, parameters, such as temperature, dispersion medium, stabilizers, and presence of crystalline particles. So by conversion of uh, native, or uh, we have methane parent drug particles into nanoparticles, by this conversion, you have conversion from crystalline to amorphous, partially or completely, we can get enhancement in the solubility rate and extent. Increase adhesiveness, we have uh, also a disadvantage for nanoparticles by this enhancement uh, adhesiveness uh, compared to the microparticle. Uh, this high adhesiveness uh, to gut wall lead to, lead to enhance bioavailability of poor water solubility by prolongation of contact time. So uh, we have comparison between nanoparticles, micro, microparticles, and other sizes. We have uh, further uh, adhesion of uh, particles to the uh, gut wall, and this uh, long contact will increase the permeation of drug particles. Also, enhancement for the precutaneous permeation as uh, advantage for the nanoparticles, for uh, gels, for uh, creams, uh, any semi-solid uh, applied topically. Uh, also, we can make modification in the particle size of drugs uh, by the nanotechnology, and then we can get more permeation. And this will uh, also increase the effectiveness regarding the topical effect or systemic effect. Also, for blood-brain barrier transport and for brain targeting, by the modification of particles uh, into nanoparticles and by the modification of particles by the liposome, by increase the lipophilicity of drug particles, also we can get more permeation in the brain. Other advantage, increase pulmonary deposition by the nanosization, uh, so we can get more deposition and more uh, drug permeation uh, to get a local or systemic effect. By IV administration, uh, nanoparticles uh, not make a clogging for the capillaries. So it can be administered by the intravenous route, and also we can get direct effect or by the uh, targeting, uh, by use of certain types of ligand, we can get more localization of drug particles. A decrease enzymatic degradation by use of certain types of polymer uh, includes the nanoparticles. These types of polymers uh, can uh, prevent the effect of proteolytic enzymes, as example for uh, protein drugs. So we can get a decrease in the enzymatic degradation and decrease in the uh, drug effect. Nanoparticles and targeting. One of the uh, most advanced um, uh, approach related to the nanotechnology and biotechnology is the targeting of a drug. A targeted delivery is a smart drug delivery system. So nanoparticles attached to the, uh, attached to the carrier, to, to the homic device, by which we can get targeting for the drug to the site of the action, uh, to the tissue, to the organ, to the cell. So get more localization of the drug particles inside uh, these sites and then we have more drug effect. Example on the design, we have drug particles in nano size uh, or nucleic acid 
incorporated within this uh, core, uh, surrounded by the biodegradable uh, polymer, uh, or attached to the antibody for the targeting. So we can get two, uh, two main types of targeting, active targeting and passive targeting. Uh, so we have uh, drug targeting for uh, anti-cancer or cytotoxic, uh, cytotoxic drugs. Uh, due to the change in the uh, function of the tumor cells, so we have uh, different vasculature, we have different uh, endothelium uh, layer uh, regarding the permeation, so we can get passive uh, targeting for the drug particles or uh, active targeting if attached to the certain types of ligand. Uh, of course, there is differences in the mechanism of transport between the passive targeting and active targeting. The active targeting depends on the receptor and action, and then, then there's change in the uh, surface membrane. Also for this type of this mechanism of transport of the drug particles inside the cell, depending on endocytosis, we have uh, attachment between the receptor and the drug uh, particles. Uh, after that, we have a change in the surface membrane um, and uh, so entrance of the drug particles inside the cell uh, and this gives more localization for drugs inside the cell and this is the most, uh, most advanced, um, uh, most effective uh, targeting. Uh, targeting to the inside the cell is more effective than the targeting to the tissue or organ. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed Najim. Thank you for this valuable information and uh, uh, this uh, details about uh, the topics about the biotechnology, biotechnology in the development of the pharmaceutical product. Thank you again. And uh, in, uh, in my name uh, and on the behalf of the Dean of College of Pharmacy, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Professor Mohammed Abbas, the Secretary of the University Council. Thank you, Professor Mohammed, for joining us today. And uh, uh, again, thank you for all attendees and all speakers. Now, uh, uh, I think we are uh, finished all the topics uh, today of our webinar. No, now we will start the Q&A session and open the uh, discussion panel for all attendees. If you have any question, uh, please uh, just raise your hand and uh, um, any mute, uh, and I will um, uh, give you permission to unmute your mic to uh, to talk. شكرا جزيلا لحضراتكم شكرا لجميع المحاضرين والحضور جميعا شكرا جزيلا بروفيسور محمد دكتور محمد شكرا لحضورك معنا نيابة عن السيد رئيس الجامعة تفضل دكتور محمد. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, okay? That's good. Thank you very much indeed for all the speakers and as well as for all organizers for such uh, lectures today. And I hope all the best for the uh, for this uh, for this evening. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I have a question if you don't mind, uh, Doctor. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this is coronavirus. <laughs> no, <it's laughs> sorry. Um, I don't know. Uh, sorry again. <clears throat> I would like to welcome Dr. Uh, Professor Midrasi. Dr. Midrasi, is he still with us? Yes, Dr. Dr. Ahmed, Professor Midrasi. Do you hear Dr. Ahmed? Dr. Ahmed, the writer. Uh, Professor Mudarisi is now with us. Uh, uh, we have... Yes, yes, okay. yes, we have yes, a good. yes. We have a question now. Uh, if you if you hear, please. Tafadl Dr. Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum, Professor Mudarisi. Thank you very much for... Okay, thank you very much for your lectures. And I have just one question for you. Uh, yes. Are there any research groups in Iran sequenced the full genome of uh, coronavirus? And what about the results, similarities and dissimilarities with other strains in the world? Yes, we have NGS in Iran, uh, next generation sequencing machines. Uh, we have in the university and also we have in private uh, laboratory, which is my laboratory actually in Iran. Uh, and me myself uh, involved in production of uh, some uh, kits and primers and so on. And also we are involved in sequencing of whole genome of the 
virus in Iran using two systems, um, Sanger Center and also NGS system, which we have already. Thank you very much, indeed. Thank you, Dr. Kutaybe, for sharing me this. Uh, Thank you, Professor <laughs> Mohammed. Thank you uh, again for disease. joining us. <clears throat> uh, uh, your, uh, please, attendees, if you have any questions, just raise your hand. And Abu Dr. Kutaybe, salam alaikum. Naam, tfadal, tfadal, Dr. شكرا جزيلا طبعا لحضرتك وادارتك الرائعه للندوه عندي سؤال الدكتور عدنان دكتور عدنان بدران الاستاذ الكبير طبعا السؤال يخص الهوست سيستم اللي يوز فور برودكشن اوف ريكومبيننت هيومن بروتين اي هاف ا كويستشن وات از ذا بريفيرد هوست سيستم وات از ذا بريفيرد هوست سيستم فور برودكشن اوف ريكومبيننت هيومن بروتينز شكرا جزيلا دكتور للسؤال الحقيقة المهم بالهوست اللي عندنا انه انت تنقل له فيكتور وهذا الفيكتور ممكن ان ينقل المادة الماتيريالز يعني المادة الوراثية الى الفيكتور حتى تندمج مع الجينيتيك ماتيريالز للهوست حتى يبدي ينتج شيء مهم شيء مهم انه انا من انقل يعني احكي لك بالعربي من انقل اي جينيتيك ماتيريالز فروم فور اكزامبل فروم هيومن تو بكتيريا من المهم جدا انه هذه الجينيتيك ماتيريال ممكن يصير بها اكسبريشن بالبكتيريا اذروايز يعني شغله ما فايده من عنده صح ولا لا؟ نعم فلذلك يجب ان يكون هنا يعني مثلا البكتيريا بها بروموترز لشغلها لكنه هذا البروموتر ممكن ان يسوي تحفيز للقطعه الجينيه اللي انا ماخذها من الهيومن أو الحيوان في البكتيريا حتى تنتج هذا السؤال المهم فلذلك أنا يجب أن أركز أنه أنا من أنقل الفيكتور إلى البكتيريا أنه هذا الفيكتور يحتوي على البروموتر الخاص لإنتاج هذا الجين في الكائن الحي الآخر هذه جدا نقطة مهمة الشيء الثاني هل الكائن الحي اللي أنا راح أنقله المادة يعني الـ DNA أو الـ CDNA اللي أريده ينتج الـ يعني الإمكانيات المعملية خلينا نقول في هذا الكائن الحي متوفرة حتى ينتج هذا أيضا مهم أنا قلت في بعض الأحيان مثلا إذا أريد ننتج بروتين معين هذا البروتين مو فقط ينتج من قبل الرايبوسوم يطلع بروتين وإنما لازم يروح وين يروح للإندوبلازمك روتيكيلام أند كولجي أباريتس حتى تكمل عملية يعني الطيات مالته ثم يعني قد تنقطم عند السلسلة من السلاسل حتى يصير يعني يؤدي وظيفته فلذلك انا مثلا ما اقدر انقل هذا يعني الجين الى بكتيريا لانه ما بها هذا السيستم فانقلها اذا الى خلايا حيوانيه مثلا يعني كبد ماميليان سيل ماميليان يعني ماميليان سيلز اي حتى تقدر تنتج هذا الشيء فلذلك اختياري للهوست هو اعتمادا على كيفيه انتاج الهوست لي يعني التارجت اللي انا اعطيته اياه يعني عفوا دكتور عفوا دكتور نعم عفوا دكتور ممكن مداخله من دكتور مدرسي؟ نعم تفضل دكتور تفضل اي اي هاد سم كومنتس فور يو ذا كومنت از فور بيو يو يو اسك اف اي اف اي ام رايت يو اسك ويتش هوست از ذا بيست فور ريكومبيننت بروتين ام اي رايت؟ يور كويستشن از ذيس وان Yes, yes, professor. Yes, you are right. Okay, okay. And um, the most important thing depends on the protein, recombinant protein. If the recombinant protein has got some post-translational modification, for example, for for example, for erythropoietin has got some glycosylation. When you have glycosylation, you cannot produce this protein, this recombinant protein in bacteria. So you must produce this recombinant protein in a sort of mammalian cell uh, and the kind of the the uh, kind of uh, glycosylation is also is very important which cell line you must use usually they use cho cell cho cell but uh, if the protein doesn't have any glycosylation you can use uh, just bacteria but however if you need, for example, for uh, in Iran, we produce um, a vaccine for uh, hepatitis B, hepatitis B. 
So in this uh, system, we need some sort of glycosylation, which, which, which it can be happen in yeast. In this situation, we produce in yeast. Uh, so it depends on post-translational modification, which uh, happen in this uh, recombinant protein. So it is the most important part of uh, thing which you must uh, know before production of recombinant protein in the host. Thank you very much, Professor Mosmodaris, for uh, this uh, explanation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ahmed Najim, and thank you, Professor Adnan. Now, if Dr. Hisham, Dr. Hisham. عندي مجموعة أسئلة. Uh, the first question is to Professor Mudarisi. Are you here? Yes, yes, I am here. Okay, my question is similar to uh, Professor Muhammad, but in the uh, from another side. I have done a question. Is the work on the coronavirus, which caused the COVID-19 disease, the work on the DNA sequence, is allowed in your country now? Uh, I, I didn't understand. Work on DNA sequence because this virus has got RNA, not DNA. No, yeah, yeah, I know is it, the, the virus has uh, RNA, but if you work on yeah. the uh, sequence, you need to uh, convert it to complementary DNA, and then you need to make Yes, it yes, we do that, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah. We, we is change, we transfer. It is, is it why not? Yeah. It is, yes, yes, it is not, why not? Because it is very, but depends on which primer you use. Uh, if you use, it depends on your NGS system. If you use, for example, uh, ion proton, is different when you use uh, Illumina system uh, for transferring, uh, for making cDNA from RNA. So different primers, such as random primer primers or specific primers, which is necessary for making cDNA depends on which machine, NGS machine, machine you use. So there is no any plan to deal with the virus, with coronavirus now as a sequence uh, or molecular study? No, it is possible because we do already and we transfer, uh, actually we lies the cell, lies the virus so we can extract the RNA by kit. We have the kit, we made ourselves the kit uh, we extract the RNA, transfer oh. to cDNA, and okay. then uh, when we make, we do PCR line, uh, PCR, and then according to the PCR, we sequence the PCR. The second the question. But, but it depends on the machine. Sorry, uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Mudelsi. The second question is uh, to Dr. Ahmed Najim. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Najim, what about the toxicity? Thank you. What about the toxicity of the using nanomaterials as drug delivery uh, host or drug delivery carrier? Uh, what about the toxicity? Can you just briefly uh, talk about the toxicity, if there's any toxicity? Yes, uh, doctor. One of the restrictions for use of nanoparticles uh, for systemic effect is the nanotoxicity, which is related to the uh, high absorption uh, degree of uh, nanoparticles. So depending on the types of materials used for uh, stabilization or for enclosing and encapsulation of nanoparticles, we can get uh, controlling for the drug release. Uh, so must be controlled. Uh, must, uh, all the drugs must be loaded within the nanoparticles. Uh, so not, no free form uh, drugs. Uh, any free form drug may lead to the nanotoxicity. So depending on the type of the drug delivery system, if it is injectable, uh, parenteral or non-parenteral, uh, this degree of uh, toxicity may be decreased or increased. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed Najim. The third Thank question is, uh, is to Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Al-Badran. Can you hear me, Dr. Al-Badran? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, can you uh, just explain uh, briefly and uh, describe how to building the gene. That's what your uh, student, uh, PhD student, doing in, in the PhD thesis or PhD uh, 
support. Can you just briefly describe how to gene coding? Sorry, I don't get you the question. Okay. I'll have to ask the Arabic. Mungkin, 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 she molasses me Tarika Bina a gene. Yani, I'm an anti primarine. أنا عندي برايمرين أقدر أقدر أضخم الجين ليش أحتاج إلى بناء هذا الشغل الجديد اللي ما حد متطرق له حقيقة نعم yes this is concentrated gene بناء الجين يعني in in our work in the biotechnology we have to use the cell then we got the DNA from this cell or RNA and cDNA, and then we work with the uh, other uh, work in the uh, genetic engineering. Uh, here sometime, for example, uh, one of my students work on the uh, parathyroid hormone. So yes. from where we, we will get this parathyroid hormone from a human? It's difficult to yes. do that. That's why we uh, think in another way, why we, we don't, uh, make the gene in the uh, in the lab by uh, long primers and uh, and these primers is make uh, overlapping and from that overlapping we got our target of DNA which is the gene for parathyroid hormone and then we transfer this gene for the vector and the vector for the Escherichia coli and then the Escherichia coli produce uh, the uh, hormone of parathyroid hormone. The same thing we did with the hurodin uh, protein, also we did the same, same thing. This uh, uh, method, is, I think it's uh, working on the, some, some researcher work on this in uh, China and uh, USA and I think Germany, but in our region, uh, I didn't see any research research yeah, uh, doing this method. It is a very nice method and uh, it, it's uh, good for the work. I hope the others do this work again. Uh, you know, in biotechnology and technology, we need to take DNA يعني الان هي دكتوره دكتوره رفيف عامر في كليه الصيدله والكل الاخوان يعرفوها اشتغلنا على الباراثيرويد هرمون فالباراثيرويد هرمون لازم ناخذ خلايا من غده الباراثيرويد وما نقدر نحصلها الا من عمليه او في شيء فلذلك كانت صعبه فلذلك فكرنا انه احنا نبني الجين الخاص بالباراثيرويد هرمون بناء داخل المختبر فاخذنا مجموعه من البرايمرات طويلة تصير مو برايمر عادي 20 الى 18 الى 20 قاعده وانما وصلنا الى تقريبا 75 قاعده فاربع برايمرات هاي البرايمرات يعني نضخهم برايمر مع برايمر ثاني فراح يصير بيناتهم اكو اوفرلابنج ثم نجيب البرايمر الثالث المنتج راح نضخمه وياه ويصير اوفرلابنج اكثر الى ان ننتج القطعه اللي احنا نريدها وبذلك يعني نقلناها الى الفكتر والحمد لله نجحنا بها نجاح ممتاز وكانت يعني اول تجربه بالعراق كثير من ال يعني الاساتذه ما صدقوا هذا العمل لكن الحمد لله هو عمل حقيقي. بالنسبه لدكتوره سبق ايضا زميلتنا في كليه الصيدله اشتغلت على الهيرودين من العلق الطبي. نعم جبنا العلق الطبي من ايران وهرسنا الراس مالته واستخلصنا الار ان اي وسوينا الطريقه الاخرى. فمن شافت زميلتها قالت انا ايضا اسوي كونستركت جين وايضا بنينا الجين مال الهيرودين بناء ونجحنا بهذه الطريقه والحمد لله. فهي اذا طريقة عالميا موجودة لكنه استخدامها قليل جدا دكتور هشام شكرا لسؤالك. Thank you a lot بروفيسور البدران. My question was just to flash you on this brilliant work actually. شكرا جزيلا دكتور هشام. Thank you دكتور هشام. Thank you بروفيسور عدنان البدران. Let's go to to take the questions of the attendees please. Now we have a question from ياسين يوسف. تفضل ياسين الحضور الكرام شكرا جزيلا لحضوركم مرة أخرى رابط تسجيل الحضور موجود بالشات إذا عدكم أي أسئلة نعم. تفضل. تفضل نعم السلام عليكم عليكم السلام ورحمة الله thanks indeed for valuable talk from all the speakers I have some question one of them for دكتور مسعودي please can you hear me دكتور مسعودي 
مدرسي مين بروفيسور مدرسي يس مدرسي سوري اي ام هير Yeah, Doctor, I have a question from two parts. Uh, one of them, you said uh, in your talking, uh, when you sequenced the uh, COVID-19, you found a lot of mutation, 0.02. So that means you have uh, 60 uh, mutation in each uh, sequencing. Is that right? Uh, uh, look, uh, from one person to another person, when um, virus transfer from one person to another person, 60, yeah. 60 nucleotide will be changed. Okay. Will so, be changed. It, okay, but it depends. Yeah. Don't say exactly 60. Sometimes it's some less, sometimes I, it's more. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, so my my question uh, if is uh, all the mutation in the same part of the rna or different parts uh, different parts absolutely uh, the tr the length of the rna in the virus is about 30 kilo base means 30000 base so it depends on yeah. just randomly, but not exactly randomly, but because some hot spot is also in the in the sequence. But you usually is in different parts. It is possible sequence was randomly in different parts. So this uh, mutation can be happen can be happen in wherever uh, in different part of this sequence. Is it? Did okay. You get so answer? my my yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So my second question, following to the first question, if the mutation in different parts, that means we got now uh, COVID uh, has a lot of a mutation. How about the vaccine? Have you heard about the Oxford vaccine or uh, from another country they prepared for vaccine? Is, okay. uh, if there is a lot of a mutation, how they can prepare vaccine? Yes, uh, actually, uh, I explained during my talk, but it was very quick. Maybe it was not very clear. So, uh, look, uh, when we are speaking about the influenza, influenza virus, influenza virus is RNA virus, but uh, in uh, COVID-19 is single-stranded virus, just one single strand. That's why the uh, changing in the virus is by mutation but in uh, influenza changing in the virus is not only mutation it's but also is uh, recombination because it has eight different parts not only just single strand eight parts in influenza that's why you can f see for vaccine for influenza it's just for one year not for whole time it is yeah. just each year you have to use different vaccines according to that WHO recommendation uh, virus. So because the reason is because the virus is changing quickly. But for missile, I said in the slides, for missile, there is no changing in the virus. COVID-19 is between, is between, between missile virus and, and influenza virus that's why it has changing but not a lot like influenza and not uh, like uh, measles nothing so at, at the beginning i said for four months already is uh, the the duration of covid 19 in the world is about four four to five months so at the moment we don't know exactly we don't know exactly the vaccine for this one should be like influenza very very quickly change in the next year or not but in my point of view i mean uh, according to my lectures and my uh, working in our lab uh, covid 19 covid 19 has got sort of mutation in some hot spots hot spots so in this situation, in this situation, we have to, and not me, 
many, many companies focused on some part of the virus, some part of the virus, which has got less mutation, less mutation, and target that part for vaccine, for vaccine. So Talk. it is possible. But if you want just uh, unknown, target some part of the virus unknown, not directly with uh, analyzing different different sequences, it is absolutely wrong way and you, not, you get nothing, not vaccine and nothing. But you have to know about the whole, I mean, uh, alignment, alignment, all sequences I showed in a slides, align all sequences and find out, and find out which part has got less, less changes, has got less changes in point of uh, nucleotides. So you can select that part for targeting as a vaccine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a, another no question problem. for Dr. Hosham. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Hosham, can you hear me? Dr. Hosham, we are on a Dr. Hosham. Thank you, Professor Modaresi, for details. Thank you. Really, it is valuable. And you are welcome. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Dr. Hosham, do you hear me? The Ustad has a question. If I don't know if I'm here, I'm here, Dr. Hosham. But I'm sure I'll give you a minute. دكتور هشام ما موجود العفو استاذ نعتذر اعتقد فصل عند النت او شيء من هذا القبيل يعني ماشي خير ان شاء الله انا بالنسبه بس ملاحظه استاذ اطرح لنا سؤالك ممكن الاساتذه الاخرين يجاوبون اذا ماشي ماشي تفضل هاو كان وي دايركت ذا نانو بارتيكل تو سبيسيفيك اورجان يعني شلون احنا انا جاست اي ميست سم اوف ذا دكتور احمد توك Maybe he explained that. Sean can, يعني Sean نقدر نوجه ال nanoparticle لل specific organ يعني إذا ممكن دكتور أحمد. نعم نعم دكتور نعم. طبعاً هو أنواع التارجتينج إنه passive و active targeting. بالنسبة لل passive يعتمد على the physiological process من ناحية مثلاً disposition by the microphage. بعدين the drug particle يروح لمثلاً liver أو spleen. هذا يعتمد على the physiological process. بينما ال active اللي عادة يصير connection between uh, drug particles قد تكون هذه ال particles هي nano particles أصلاً يعني صار عندنا modification بال size of particle of a drug تكون هي بال nano size وتربط مع مثلاً ligand معين أو home device carrier اللي قد يكون هو monoclonal antibodies قد يكون viral vector some types of vitamins هذه النوع من ال ligand تعطينا Targeting, I'm going to active targeting. The active targeting, it doesn't affect the physiological process. It doesn't affect the immune system and the macrophage. It doesn't go to the liver or the spleen. It will be a certain expression, a certain receptor. It will be a tumor in the kidney, in the liver. So it will directly go to these organs. When you go to these organs, it will go to these organs. راح ايضا الى قابليه بسبب السايز اوف بارتيكلز اولا وبسبب وجود هذه اللايجنت الى قابليه انه يدخل مو فقط يكون يعني قريب على الاورجن راح يكون يدخل الاورجن يدخل التشو ويكون داخل السيل لانه اصلا الريسبتور موجود على السيل ممبرين يعني من خلال التعريف الموجود خلال عمليه البرودكشن او البروسيسنج راح يصير عنده في التع... تع... يعني كانه تعريف او اكسبريشن معين انه فقط اتحد مع هذا الريسبتور الموجود في سيرتين سيل فعلى ظهرها نحصل اكتف تارجتنج على مستوى السيل فمن يكون قريب على السيل يتحد مع الريسبتور راح تحفز تغيرات تصير بالسيل ممبرين وبالتالي يصير اندوسايتوسيس انسايد ذا سيل وراح يكون عندي لوكاليزيشن فور دراج نانو بارتيكلز انسايد ذا سيل وهي عبر عن الثيرد اوردر تارجتنج يعني هذا اعلى من ما موجود مثلا على مستوى التشي او الاورجن Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed. Much appreciated. Thank, thank you for uh, all the speaker and uh, thank you for the orga uh, organizer. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, uh, for, for attendees. Thank you, Ustad Yasin. Shukran Jazeera al Hadartek wal Mudakaltek. Ustad al Hadur al Kiram, Yani, Ida Mako Esila Bad, A Mudakalat, Hatanakhtim al Jelse, Antal Hadarat. 
نعم اي احد عنده مداخله ممكن يتفضل قبل لا نختم سؤال اخير اذا ممكن تفضل دكتور ماي كويستشن تو بروفيسور مدرسي يس اي ام هيرين اوكي دير بروفيسور يو سيد يو فاوند ماني سنبز ان ذا كورونا فيروس اراوند ذا وورد by the alignment yes. of your work. Yes. Is this differences in the SNPs in the coronavirus between countries affect the virulence of this virus? Uh, you mean affect the mortality or yes. infectivity? Yes. 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 Uh, look, just, uh, just I give you one uh, answer which is very important. Is it all usually you have many SNPs or mutation in virus. Mm -hmm. But but if the mortality goes up, look, if the mortality goes up, usually the patient goes to go to hospital and admit and maybe die, maybe die. Mm -hmm. The only possibility for transferring, transferring the COVID-19 to person is medical personnel doctor, uh, nursing, and so on. Because yeah. the person with high, with, with, with very severity symptoms, quickly goes to the hospital. So mm -hmm. doesn't transfer to normal or ordinary people. Uh, if, I mean, I am saying about the mortality, about the mortality. If the mortality goes down, usually person goes to the society and transfer the disease, transfer the virus to other people. Do you understand what I mean? I yes. mean, it yes. is happen, it is happened by mutation or SNPs changing in mortality. But mm. if the mortality, go, mortality goes up, my, I mean, uh, the mortality get higher, usually the person die and doesn't transfer the, a virus to other people but if the mortality goes down transfer to other people in the society that's why uh -huh. for this reason for this reason usually usually the virus in the society when you are speaking about the society we transferring many times one two three two hundred times transferring in this situation usually the severity <laughs> and mortality of the virus getting down. That's why, that's why in the world, imagine in thousand, thousand years, many viruses coming in the world, many, many viruses, which we, maybe we don't know why, which viruses 5,000 years ago, we don't know. But in the world, usually, if we get very severe virus, we usually die quickly. That's why we don't transfer to any other. But if it is with lower severity or mortality, we transfer to others. That's why this is the, uh, actually for all viruses in the world, you, the all viruses, all the viruses in the world usually transfer to people and the mortality getting lower and lower and lower. But it takes time. It takes time. Definitely, yeah. but this time depends on that mutations. How long does that mutation happen? Depends on that one. That's our job to calculate about the mutations, about the mutations take time for next mutation and next. And which mutation is in, for example, change the severity, mortality, or which mutation change the infectivity or transferring the virus. Yeah. Did you get the answer? Yes, thank you thank very you. much. Professor. Thank you, Professor no problem, Mudarazi. welcome. Thank you for details, for explanation. Thank you, Professor uh, Adnan, for question. We, now we have a question from Professor Dr. Hassan Aidan. Tfadhal, Dr. Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Asfin, Dr. Takharna alik shway. Naitidar. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Kutayba. And the sensor thank to Dr. Falah and uh, Pharmacy College, and thanks for uh, all presenters for the nice lecture. 
I wish ask my brother, Dr. Adnan Al-Badran, I have two questions, if possible. First question, uh, about what is the most transporter that you used to transport a gene from human to bacteria? And what is the most appropriate that you use to confirm transportation? That is the first question. The second question, are all genes from human able to transport to bacteria, such as cytokine gene that used for uh, immunity against disease? Or and there are some exceptions in this transportation. Please uh, confirm this or illustrate this. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hassan, <clears throat> and welcome you again here in our webinar. <clears throat> First question is uh, the most uh, organism we use uh, in our production is E. coli. <clears throat> Why? Because it is safe. It is, uh, you know, the uh, short life and the, uh, you know, it is a, a simple bacteria. Uh, but we have another uh, organisms like yeast or uh, also yeah, the mammalian cells. Uh, and uh, yours, uh, I don't know the uh, your question about only the uh, organism or another things you said about techniques that use for confirmation transportation. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, this technique uh, after we uh, transfer our vectors to the bacteria, we use also we extract the uh, DNA or. And then we search by PCR for our targets. Is there mm -hmm. uh, our target there in the uh, genetic material of bacteria or not? This is the first one. Then after that, we, uh, we uh, extract the bacteria and we extract the proteins from this bacteria. And we search also for our protein by many methods and we will find our uh, protein or not. So we have uh, many uh, methods for uh, confirming uh, that things. About oh. the gene able to uh, transfer to the bacteria, this is depend on the uh, kind of gene, uh, or also how many protein this gene will uh, produce to us. Uh, also, if this gene uh, needs some uh, special promoters or not, uh, or needs some uh, work with the uh, called geopartis and other uh, things in the, in, in the cell. So I have to use the bacteria or other cells. Uh, this is depend on the gene, depend on the uh, long of the gene or short of the gene, and depend on the uh, materi materials it's already in the uh, organisms, bacteria or the uh, mammalian cells. Okay, doctor. Okay, have any experiment about a cytokine gene? You do it in for your lab? Me, for me, no. I didn't do the cytokine genes. Uh, I work with but, the insulin. But you're able. But you're yeah, able I, to do hope, Hopefully, <laughs> I, hopefully I will be able to do this. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You, Dr. Hassan. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Hassan. Thank you, Professor Adnan, for uh, for details and informations. Uh, right uh, now, uh, I think uh, that's all about uh, our webinar today. Uh, I'd like uh, to thank uh, I'd like to thank our speakers, uh, Professor Mudarisi from Islamic Republic of Iran. Thank you, Professor Mudarisi, uh, for joining us, and uh, thank you, uh, Professor Adnan Al Bedran. Uh, from College of Science, University of Basra. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hisham, uh, for joining us. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ahmed Najim. Thanks uh, for all attendees. Thanks for all speakers uh, for your time. Uh, uh, I, uh, now uh, we will uh, finish the uh, webinar. And uh, thanks for all. God bless you. And Dr. 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 If you have any... Uh, Dr. طبعا انا باعتباري مو كمحاضر اليوم باعتباري رئيس فرع الصيدانيات في كليه بنوه انه احنا ضمن مقررات كليه الصيدله المرحله الخامسه يوجد مقرر يعني يعطى في 
الفرقه الخامسه اللي هو فارماستيكال بايوتكنولوجي يتم التركيز عليه على مقدمه عامه عن انتروداكشن اباوت يعني تكنولوجي باي تكنولوجي انتروداكشن اباوت ذا فورميليشن كومبوننت الكاركترايزيشن اوف بروتين فهذا جوابا يعني بالنسبه للدكتور عدنان يعني جزء من هاي الامور اللي نحاول يعني الصيادله يكونون مطلعين على الابديت الموجود بالفارماستيكال بايوتكنولوجي وهذا طبعا المقرر بالدبي 2012 2013 وان شاء الله بقدر الامكان نحاول نركز على هذا الموضوع لانه يعتبر موضوع مهم، شكرا جزيلا الله لك الله يبارك فيك دكتور احمد شكرا جزيلا الله يبارك فيكم عندكم اثنين بريليانت يعني سبع ورفيف ممكن تستفيدون منها كثيرا في يعني هذه الدروس وايضا اجراء البحوث واتمنى لكم التوفيق ان شاء الله، شكرا لكم شكرا جزيلا دكتور شكرا شكرا جزيلا للحضور جميعا، شكرا جزيلا لحضراتكم الحضور الكرام شكرا جزيلا للمحاضرين شكرا جزيلا لكل من حضر معنا انا حقيقه بس في قبل لا نختم يعني دكتور سركيس دكتور اذا حضرتك نحب نسمع صوتك بس دكتور ونسلم عليك اذا حضرتك تفتح المايك دكتور سركيس في الختام ختامها مسك يعني وياك نريد اذا تسمعنا دكتور سركيس يعني يمكن دكتور سركيس ما اعرف ما جاي يسمعنا او الصوت مع ذلك دكتور ان شاء الله صوتنا يوصل لحضرتك ممنونين جدا لحضورك معنا اليوم دكتورنا العزيز الله يعطيك الصحه والعافيه و ثانك يو فور اول سي يو سي يو اند جود باي في امان الله وحفظه شكرا جزيلا لك دكتور قتيبة حقيقة ولكل الأخوة المساهمين في إنجاح هذه الندوة شكرا جزيلا دكتور هشام شكرا لحضراتكم في أمان الله شكرا جزيلا مع السلامة مع السلامة شكرا جزيلا شكرا جزيلا شكرا جزيلا